Okay, kiddos. Um, for those of you that were absent, or just those that need a little extra help, uh, I'm going to go over how to do the DNA replication fork with you. So basically, you have the replication fork, and um, the first thing you want to do is look at the directions. It tells you what to do. So the first thing it asks is to label the DNA templates. So this is a template, and this is the other half of the template. So we're going to label those DNA templates. also the bottom. Okay, at that point you can go ahead and check number one off of your list and move on to number two. Number two asks you to fill in the missing complementary DNA bases on our original molecule. So this is our original molecule. Notice we just have one half of the double helix. So we need to use Chargaff's rule of complementary base pairing to write the pairs. So A would pair with a T, C with a G, A with T, T with A, and C with G. Okay, you're not done at that point because you still have the rest of this. So to make it easy, I like to chunk mine so I don't lose my spot. I'm just going to do like groups of five. But it doesn't have to be five. It could be whatever you really want it to be. And then I'll start to pair them up. So C, C, A, G, T would go with G, G, T, C, A. And continue on down the rest of the strand. point you have both strands of the DNA, so I can cross off number two. And um, step three is where it gets a little tricky. So um, it asks you to complete the continuous strand. Label the five prime and three prime ends. Fill in complementary bases and show error direction. Label the strand as your leading strand. So this is where kids get confused and they're like, oh my gosh, what the heck do I do next? So what I want you to pay special notice to are these little um, prime numbers. Remember the primes tell you which way um, the molecule is facing. So we're going to go ahead and highlight those little numbers. That one's a three. On the bottom you have a five. And then over here on the other side, you have a five and a three. Okay, remember that DNA um, strands are anti-parallel. So they're parallel, but they're running in opposite directions. And that's all that the 5 and 3 is really telling you. The 5 corresponds to the strand that has a phosphate sticking off on the end. So um, once you've got that, then I'm going to go in and write what the new strand would have on each end. So if this end is 3, the new strand would be a 5 on that side. And over here, where it's a 5, it would be linking up with a 3. And then do the same thing with the top strand. This three would pair with five, and this five over here would pair with the three, okay? Now, something I want you to remember is that DNA polymerase, which is the enzyme that brings in new bases and new nucleotides, can only build in a five prime to three prime direction. And that happens on the new strand of DNA you're creating. That is probably the most important thing for you to remember. Okay, DNA polymerase builds a five prime to three prime direction on the new strand. And that is going into the fork, the portion that's already zipped together. So look up here, this new strand is going to start with a 3 and run to a 5 over there. This one's going to be a 5 running to a 3. So 
So this bottom strand is going to be my leading strand because it's going into the fork in a 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So I'm going to take another color just to show you the difference and I'm going to go through and pair up my bases. So T would, A would go to T, T would A, A, and I'm just going to keep working all the way into the fork, stopping where it's zipped together. So that's all you have to do with that part. It's just match up complementary bases. Um, so we want to go ahead and draw one great big arrow and label this our leading strand because it's the strand that actually starts replication. And it has continuous replication, which means it goes in one long piece without stopping. done number three. So the next thing I want us to do is to make Okazaki fragments. Okazaki fragments are those little bursts of replication that happen on the lagging strand. So because this strand goes 5-3 from the zipped up portion, we have to wait for the leading strand to unzip a whole bunch of um, nucleotides before we can start working. So we're going to go ahead and start here, and we're going to make Okazaki fragments five bases in length. So I'm going to pair this up with G, G, T, D, A. And this time my arrow is going out, because remember, DNA polymerase only builds in the five prime to three prime direction. Okay, so now we'll go to the next Okazaki fragment and pair it up, just like we did before. is actually really simple. It's just counting, really, and then following base pairing rules. And we can just leave this last little segment alone because it doesn't have five. Okay, so that is um, step four, and also part of step five here. We just need to go back and label it lagging strand. Because it works in little Okazaki fragments, um, it has given discontinuous replication. Okay, so we've now done step five. Um, each one of these is a little Okazaki fragment, okay, and um, you want to know that replication is always going into the fork, the segment that is still zipped up. So um, once the whole molecule has been replicated, pretend like this part's already been done, then it's going to split in half. I'm going to go ahead and erase this here. And um, these will be your two DNA molecules. Here's one, and here's the other. So one would stay in the cell, and one would move to the new cell that's formed after mitosis. Um, so notice that they have the exact same code. That's the whole point, is to have an exact copy. And that each one has half original DNA and half newly formed DNA. So um, that's how DNA replication works. Again, make sure you always pay attention to the primes, because they're going to tell you which way to start. The leading strand is always the new one that begins with the five and works its way into the fork to the three. I hope this helped you guys that were gone, and those of you that still have questions, always come see me anytime you need to. Thanks. Bye.